going to do. Am I the only one that's excited? Yeah, because you know what? On Sunday morning, I get a nosy spirit. I want to know what God is up to. So I, I, I get a little nosy and I get curious and I have to come to the house of worship in order to find out what God has to say to me and what God is going to do. So if you're like me, then you're anxious to hear what God has to say to us. Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yes, yes, there's a praise within me. There, there, is, there is a worship spirit that's trying to come up out of me. I hope I can make it uh, become contagious. All the other stuff we've been catching this season of pandemic, y'all may as well catch the spirit of worship. Am I right about it this morning? It's contagious. It's contagious. If you think about it, all you got to do is be around some people who sure enough want to serve God. Sure enough want to praise his name. And guess what? It'll, it'll, it'll move over and it'll fall right down on you. So we thank God for another time of service. Are we? Are we? Amen. I just wanted to make sure that we are, we are on Facebook Live. Let me welcome all of our in-person worshipers uh, into this place of worship. And then for those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook, welcome into this space of worship. We are here to praise and lift up the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. That's the only name worthy of being lifted up. He's the only one that's worthy of all of our praise. So we lift up his holy name today on the second Sunday in the month of December. Amen. We come thanking God for another privilege and an opportunity uh, to be in the house of worship. Amen. Those of you who are worshiping here in person, if you would please take, take a selfie. Take a picture of yourself, send it to your friends, send it to your uh, text message, uh, those who are in, on your group chat space, and let them know that it's worship time here at New Calvary. Amen. If you've got Facebook friends, uh, share it, spread it, news feed it, and then hit those share buttons and let everybody know you can be a part of this good time that we are having here today. Is my praise team ready to go? All right, I, I got a ready praise team. I don't know what their official name is. I'm going to call them ready. Amen. Just, y'all ready? Come on, come on, come on and praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we put those blessed hands together all over this place? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord, in the land of the living? One more time. Do I have any company in this place? Do I have any company in this place? Lord, we thank you. We honor you for who you are. We thank you for another day, God, another opportunity that was not promised. Saturate this place with your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, and your way shall be had. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth? You set your glory above. The heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. What a mighty God we Mighty God, we serve angels. Bow before the mighty God, we serve. What a mighty, what a 
mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Angels, angels bow before the mighty God we serve. Oh Lord, how excellent. Oh Lord, how excellent. Is your name upon the earth? You said to run your thoughts, the heavens and the earth. When I think of all you made. I think, when I think of all of me, the sun, the moon, and the stars. No praise is high stars. enough. <laughs> Wait and glory, God, to the praise of God we are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow before the mighty God we Hallelujah, 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 all glory, all glory, and honor, and honor, all praise, all praise, all praise, all praise, to the mighty God we serve, mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Does anybody know that we serve a mighty God in this place? Check one, the, check. the God that I serve is alive and well check and living. Hallelujah. And he comes to see about his people. So can we take five seconds just to give God some glory? Just to give God some honor? To give God some praise? Because I don't know about you, but when I look back over my life, and I begin to think things over. It was nobody but the grace of God that said you gonna make it anyhow. You gonna make it anyhow. You gonna make it, you gonna make it, you gonna make it. That's enough to give him glory. That's enough to give him honor. That's enough to give him praise. We gonna make it. Whether we want to or not, we gonna make it. When it don't look like it, we gonna make it. My, my, my. I'm sorry. Never, never apologize for a move of God. Amen. Amen. I got my assignment. I got my assignment this morning. Make it. 
Don't give up. Make it. Don't give out. Keep on pushing. Oh, praise his name. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for those marching orders. Whatever it takes, we're going to make it. You know, I don't care how you, you cross the finish line. Y'all saw that Olympic story where the man fell down and he had to crawl across the finish line. And the other Amen. fellow, his daddy, came out the stands and, and helped him crawl. Whatever it takes, yeah. get across the finish line. We're in this for the long haul. And there's victory on the other side. I know I'm right about it. Good morning, everybody. Praise God for you this morning. Amen. Thank God for our praise team. We are going to move forward in this time of worship. I've already welcomed our in-person and our Facebook worshipers. Uh, if there's anybody else, we want to welcome you as well. Yeah. Amen. We want to move forward in this time uh, uh, and in this space. We need to hear what the word of God has to say. Amen. Reverend Walter Ayers has, been, has not been with us for a few Sundays, and it's good to see his smiling face. He is going to come and give us our scripture reading for this morning. And then Reverend Dr. Steve Wright, he has not been with us for a few Sundays. It's good to see him in the house one more time. He will come following the word and give us the prayer of faith all in that order. Thank God for you uh, this morning. Good morning. Can I cry a little bit? body, but uh, that's not going to hold me down. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Praise God. If you'll turn with me to Matthew, the first chapter, if you're able to stand on your feet, please do to honor the word of God. Matthew, the first chapter, verses 20 through 21. If you have it, say amen. But while they thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take, thee, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Then if you'll go with me to Luke, the first chapter as well. Luke 1, verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, thou art, thou hast found favor with God. Then go with me again to Luke, the second chapter, verses 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is called Christ the Lord. Amen. If you will feast with me on these words, because they never grow old. 
because we recognize our Savior through these words. God bless you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we yes, yes. pause today yes. during our worship service to say thank you. Yes. Lord, we thank you for many things today. Yes, Some things we take for granted, but I come this morning to remind us to be thankful. Yes, yes. So we thank you, God, for all that you've done. We thank you for bringing us into this place one more time. And Lord God, the theme seems to be to hang in there. Your word says that, that, that we are to, to, to not be weary in right. well-doing, and we shall reap yes. if we faint not. So we thank you, God, that you, you're energizing us today to continue to run. In spite of the odds, continue to run. In spite of people staying home watching television and watching YouTube, continue to run the race. Yes. Yes. And you promised us that we shall reap if we faint not. And for that, we're thankful. Continue to bless the new Calvary Baptist Church. Lord God, bless our pastor, our bishop, oh God. Continue to energize him and send him words, oh God, that he would share with this congregation. We pray for Sister Veronica Oliver, that you would bless her in good health, Lord God. We pray for the sick of this church, all that are sick. I stand before you to know that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. Because two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I couldn't stand here and do what I'm doing now. But thanks be to God that he brought me through. And just like he brought me through, he'll bring you through too. So we bless your name today. I'm happy today. I'm happy, oh God, to be in the house of worship one more time. Continue to bless us. Continue to keep us. But more importantly, God, continue to use us to tell men and women, boys and girls, that Jesus Christ is the answer. It is in his name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Thank you today, Lord. That's where the work is done. It's not done. It's not done on your knees. It's done in your heart. Anybody can get on their knees, but only a few of us can open our hearts and welcome him in. When your heart is involved, then that means you're sincere. Praise God. You mean you mean business for what all that God has for you. And this is a this is a place filled with hearts ready to uh, hear from God. Thank you for being here once again. Uh, Thank God for this third Sunday of Advent uh, as we prepare to celebrate and even commemorate. Somebody said he was only born one time, yes, but we celebrate him uh, and commemorate his birth. Praise God, and that's what this season is all about. Uh, Amen. Thank God for a faithful church filled with members who who are concerned and and supportive of the work of ministry here at New Calvary Baptist Church. I am excited that uh, the the newness of uh, Sunday school has not worn off. You know, know, a lot of people think they outgrow Sunday school. And there are those who think that they, they're too, too old or too grown for uh, Sunday school. But we have a vibrant, very um, energetic Sunday school ministry. And we are excited about the lessons that are going forth on, on Zoom. And you can get that information on the screen or on our website. And we are uh, encouraging and inviting anybody who can access that Zoom space to come on and be a part of Sunday school, the same holds true with uh, Bible study on Wednesday evenings. Let me back up. Sunday school is every Sunday morning from 8.30 to 9.30 on Zoom, and you are invited to be a part of that. Our Bible study happens on Facebook Live on my page, uh, amen, from 7 to 8 p.m. every Wednesday. And uh, we we are about to start a new study. Amen. You need to come and find out what that is. Praise God. We, we want to start a new journey. Amen. And investigate what the word has to say. 
thank God for all of the faithful members of the church and those who are our friends and supporters on Facebook who keep up with us and give your comments and your amens and your thoughts and your expressions on Facebook. I appreciate all of that. Uh, would, you, would you also remember that uh, we don't do uh, what we need to do unless you support the work of the church with your gifts and with your uh, tithe. You can let them in, whoever they may be. Uh, praise God. I'd rather they hear what's going on uh, than to be on the outside waiting on uh, me to finish. Amen. You can give to the church by way of Givelify. Amen. Uh, cash app. You can drop off your uh, tithes and your offerings to the church at 610 South Hill Street. Amen. Immediately following the benediction. And there will be someone here who will hang around just to make sure that your gifts arrive and they are in the right place. In a few moments, I want to pray for your gifts. Amen. But I want to make this announcement before it gets away from me. <clears throat> I got a call very early this morning. I don't know why my phone was on and I, and I even answered it, but I did. And it was a young lady by the name of Glenda, and uh, she was inquiring if there would be members of this church. She's going around to all the different churches who would be interested in being a part of a Christmas caroling ministry on Christmas Eve, December 24th. Uh, if you are so inclined, and I told her I would announce this from uh, the pulpit this morning, uh, Christmas caroling is a tradition that is about to go um, to um, the days of you don't see them anymore. Amen. Christmas caroling, uh, I believe, is important because it is another way to get the gospel message out. Uh, if you're so inclined and you want to be a part of that ministry, uh, then this is the number that you can reach out and call Sister Glenda. It is uh Area code 302-723-1009. Sister Glenda, uh, area code 302-723-1009 for Christmas caroling uh, on December 24th, uh, that Christmas Eve. Amen. I don't know anything more about it than that, and I'm fulfilling my uh, commitment to do that. I got to turn my phone off. <laughs> now, anybody know me? No. This is not the time. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, um, do you have your tithes? Do you have your offerings in your hand? I'd certainly like to uh, be able to pray. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't have a, a, a financial gift or a check, but you have your device that you use uh, to give. Uh, would you put it in your hand so that we can talk to God on behalf of your giving? <clears throat> I know this is redundant, but you know you cannot worship without giving something. Amen. You may not, it may not be what you want to give, but you can't come into the presence of God without a gift. You know, you see these old movies of, of the kings and uh, the, the royalty, and when they have foreign visitors, the foreign visitors came uh, bearing gifts, and they laid them before the king. Well, uh, we bear gifts for our king, amen, in the form of our uh, stewardship. So let's pray about that. Father, I thank you once again for the privilege of prayer. Uh, prayer is, is the connection between uh, men and their God, between heaven and earth. Yes. Hear now, Lord, our cry as we attend unto our duty to be cheerful givers, to be faithful givers. Take now, Lord, the gifts that we have set aside for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Some of us are doing it out of a sense of, of gratitude more so than a sense of obedience. Lord, you've been so good to us. You've been so bountiful in your blessings 
that we can't help but give back and let you know how grateful we are. So take, Lord, these tithes and use them for your glory. Uh, as I always say, Lord, I say it again today, take the remaining 90%. Take what is left of what we have given uh, unto you and use it, Lord. Multiply it, stretch it, and make it do what we would have been able to do with the full 100%. And then, Lord, bless the giver, bless their sacrificial giving, and we shall give your name credit, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. amen. And amen. And all of our tithers, uh, if you would be so kind as to, uh, on your way out of the sanctuary, give your gifts uh, at the tithing and giving station that is in the rear of the church. Amen. And don't forget. We, we've been we've been neglecting our missionary and benevolence offerings. Don't forget uh, to give to the missionary and benevolence offerings, especially at this time of year, so that we can take those uh, gifts and use them for somebody who is in need. Amen. We see them all around us. We know they're there. This is the season we ought to be uh, very conscious of our giving. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Thank God. I'm going to move forward in this time of worship. Our praise team is going to come, and you're going to give us uh, a, a, a selection. Before I do that, let me remind you, uh, and this is for everybody who is uh, so willing and inclined. Uh, we have a preacher uh, on our ministerial staff, uh, Minister Lawrence Waddell. Amen. And he is preaching this afternoon, annual deacons and deaconess day, at the Joy Tabernacle. That's it? I'm getting ready to add on to the name of the church. The Joy Tabernacle Church in uh, Pinsgrove, New Jersey. We, we can get directions and information. Some of the men and some of the ladies of the church have, have uh, committed to go and to support our preacher. That's what we do. Amen. We support our own when they are away doing a, a good work. So I'm, I'm telling others you are invited to come. If you come at 2, do they have a, do they have a meal prepared? Amen. 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 Look at that. So you can come and get a meal and then be a part of a, a great time of fellowship and supporting uh, one of our own preachers. Uh, I was able to be there with him last year. I dropped the ball. I didn't tell nobody else. Amen. But uh, we didn't want that to happen this year. And you're going to get a good message. And it's going to be a great time of, of worship. Amen. Amen. So uh, you've been informed. Get the information from either Minister Waddell or somebody else of where the directions and address are. And we will uh, see you there. Praise team, y'all bless us, and then I'm going to come and, and give out a few more blessings, and then we can go home. Praise God. Yeah. 
all for me. You have won them all for me. child of God down. It won't happen. Because we have the victory. You know, it's, it's inconsistent of us to look like we broke down and beat up when the word of God says we are victorious. We already have the victory. So we have to resist that, that spirit of depression. We got to resist the spirit of self-pity and, and defeat. We are victorious. You may not look at it, you may not feel like it, but in your spirit, keep telling yourself, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Am I right about that? I know I am. Praise God. Praise God. Join me in this time of prayer as we prepare to receive the word of God. Faithful Savior, hear our cry. Attend to our needs with regard to this word that shall be preached. Let it be received in a manner that would be fruitful. Yes and productive yes. and then Lord take this broken vessel and use me for your glory yes, Lord. clear my mind yes, Lord. open my mouth yes, Lord. 
that I may declare your word, yes, yes. that I may do it with precision and with power. Yes, for these, your people, yes, and for your praise. Yes, Lord. I thank you for all that has occurred and all who have arrived, for all who shall receive this word, Lord. I thank you in advance for the change that is about to happen in their lives. Yes, Hopefully they'll walk away from this message with a new attitude and a determination to celebrate who you are and who they are in you. This is my prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, may they be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let us all say amen, amen. and amen one more time. Praise God, I want to read the verses of scripture. They've already been read, but perhaps somebody is arriving at a time when they were not here for the scripture reading. Uh, we find our text, uh, multiple texts, is in uh, first in Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. If you yes. would please rest upon your feet to honor the word of God. Uh, it says there in Matthew 1, 20 and 21, but while he thought on these things, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In Luke chapter 1, verse 30, we read this one verse. It says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Yes. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And the angel said unto them, he says to him first, to her second, and then thirdly, he says unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior which is Christ the Lord yes. you may be seated we pray God's blessings upon the reader I hope you read your word but more importantly upon the doer of his word three different times uh, in this Christmas story, the angel of God offers these words of assurance and encouragement to people who have experienced an encounter with God. Yes. All three verses spoke of an encounter with God. Yes. He says to Joseph, he says to Mary, and he says to these shepherds in the field, fear not. Most often, when, when we are about to do something or encounter something that could be life-altering, or when we find ourselves faced with a situation that will redefine who we are, what we do, and where we shall go in the future, our natural response is fear. Yes, yes. I know that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Webster says that fear is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. Yeah. That's the polite way of saying we get scared when stuff come along that we don't understand. Yeah. You would think that as much as we have experienced our own set of fears, I wouldn't have to tell you what Marion Webster's dictionary has to say about it. We know what fear is. Yeah, yeah. We know what it feels like. Yeah. And we don't like it. Amen. That's what amen goes. Amen. And not only don't we like it, we never seem to get used to being afraid. Amen. And that is because fear is a built-in warning system that puts our bodies and our emotions on full alert. Yeah, yeah. And we hear ourselves saying something's wrong. This is not good. Yes. It doesn't feel right. Uh -huh. yes. And it's going to hurt me. Yes. That's what fear says to us. Yes. Those were the emotions 
uh, that were being experienced by Joseph and Mary and the shepherds of our text mm -hmm. as they encountered this move of God. Yes. And each time their creator sent an angel with a calming word to, of reassurance that simply said two things, fear not. Fear not. Two words. Yeah. I want to examine these three fear nots that are recorded in the story concerning the birth of Christ. Yes. You do know that there are plenty of other fear not events in the Bible that we could look at. You know, in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from this time forward you shall be fishers of men. Then in Luke chapter 5, verse 50, Jesus told the leader of the synagogue, uh, he said, Fear not. Believe only for your daughter shall be made whole. Yes. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 20, God told Moses to tell the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then he told Joshua, Fear not, for nor be dismayed, be, be strong and of good courage. Yes. So these are familiar words coming from a God who understands our fears and has always stepped in yes. and reassured us in order to restore our peace. Yes. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. Fear destroys your peace. Yes. Fear upsets your equilibrium. Yes. But at this time of year, we are, as we commemorate the arrival of Christ, of the Christ child into the world, I want to examine the kind of fear that preceded his coming. All right. I think that I think that qualifies as as an Advent uh, message. All right. <laughs> uh, we we want to look at that. So let me begin here. Begin here. We begin with this. God is always behind our fear events. All right. I'm not talking about when a mouse runs past. I'm not talking about when, when a car almost hits you, but when a fear event comes along that you know God is about to do something in your life and you're not comfortable with it. Yes, yes. That's what I mean by yes, a fear sir. event. Yes, sir. Our first fear not event is recorded in Matthew uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Yes. I just read it to you, but what it's saying is that J Joseph is is trying to wrap his mind around this troubling news. Mm -hmm. News that the woman that he has been betrothed to be his wife mm -hmm. is with child. Yes. For many of us, instead of a fear not moment, this would have been another kind of moment. Yes. This would have been a say what moment. Yes. But we are reminded that J Joseph is not like us. Yeah, that's right. Joseph was a humble and a devout man. Yes. And according to Jewish tradition, there, there was commonly an interval of about 10 to 12 months among the Jews between the contract of the marriage and the celebration of the nuptials. All right. But the writer of this gospel account makes sure to report to us that Joseph was a just man. In other words, he was a religious and a decent man yes. uh, who did not want to shame or embarrass his espoused wife. Yes. He could have told the whole town, mm -hmm. which would have resulted in her embarrassment and uh, perhaps her stoning to death. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says, while he pondered on these things, the angel of the Lord shows up with a calm voice and message for his fears. Uh, the angel first said, uh, fear not. It's not what it looks like. And then secondly, the angel told Joseph that the child that Mary carries has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And here's the lesson for us today. Every fear not event mm -hmm. is not what it appears to be. Amen. Amen. And then two, God is always behind every fear not event right. that comes along trying to disrupt and change your life. Yeah. 
There were some things that we signed up for thinking that, that God was calling us to do something or to accomplish a great work. But it was not long before we realized that, that what we thought we were supposed to do was bigger than we realized. It was more than God uh, showed us it would be. It was more to what God was calling us to do than we had ever imagined. And if you're like me and most other children of God, fear began to set in and take over when you realize that when you do stuff for God, it's bigger than you. I wish I had a witness. But God sends a messenger with a message of reassurance that says, fear not. This is the time of year when doubters are more likely consider the reality of God and his son, Jesus Christ. All right. Atheists find it hard to deal with this time of year. Yes. It's hard to consider the Christmas story and not ask yourself, do I really believe all that the Bible has to say about Jesus and his virgin birth? Damn. Was there really a man named Jesus who came into this world over 2,000 years ago? But my message to all doubters is fear not. God is behind all of your questions. He's behind all of your doubts and your fears. Uh, God is real. Jesus did come into this sinful world and he came just for you and me. And he came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All is not lost. It's not what the enemy wants you to think that it is. There is another way. There is a better way, and that way is God's way. So I say to doubters, I say to those who are believers, fear not. Then I need to tell you this, that, that fear events always comes with answers. The second fear event is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and he shall be called Jesus. Yeah. Let me throw this little nugget in there. Earlier, uh, the angel told Joseph uh, who to name the baby, mm -hmm. how to name the baby. He said, This child shall be called Jesus. And then in order to confirm what he's saying, the angel says to Mary that the baby shall be called Jesus. Do you see what God is doing? He's giving a connection. He's building a trust barrier between husband and wife. And who better needed more trust than somebody who came up pregnant and the father didn't know what was going on. So God begins to pull them back together with this simple thing of giving them agreement on who the name will be. Yeah, yeah. Immediately uh, after hearing this, Mary wanted some answers. Sometimes fears, our fears are dry, driven by unanswered questions. Yeah, yeah. Mary wanted to know some stuff. Yeah, she wanted to know, how can this be? Right. If I have not yet known a man. Yeah. And the angel gave Mary these reasons to fear not. He said in verse 34, the Holy Ghost yes. shall come upon thee, yes. and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Yes. Therefore also that holy thing mm -hmm. which is born in you mm -hmm. shall be called the Son of God. Yes. Jesus is called that holy thing. Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 the, the, the conception is called the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is to counter those who would try to, to turn this holy work of God into something that is unseemly yes. and dark. Yes. Yes. But he says this holy thing that is being conceived. He says the overshadowing, yes. uh, the, the overshadowing suggests that, that this was not by force. This was not by uh, some violence, but it was an overshadowing of God on her life. Yes. 
You will never experience. I'm trying to explain this thing for y'all. You will never experience a fear event in your life that God does not give you answers for. Not just any answer, but the answer that solves the puzzle. The answer that begins to calm your fears. It just might be that the timing of this sermon has coincided with something that is going on in your life. So I hope you're listening to me. As if to further confirm God's power to do this wonderful and mysterious thing, the angel quickly began, brings up Mary's cousin, Elizabeth. He says, hey, Mary, you know your cousin, Elizabeth, who, who, her and Zacharias, they've been trying to have a baby. They done messed around and got old trying to have a child. And she will give birth to a child. And, and, and before Mary could say, how would that going to be? Uh, the angel brags on God. Yeah. For he says, for with God, yeah. nothing shall be impossible. The very next time you get stumped, the very next time you face a ditch, the very next time you have a wall, the very next time a giant shows up in your life, the very next time somebody says it won't happen, stand up and quote the word of God that says, for with God nothing is impossible. And child of God, that is the answer to your moments of fear. It is the answer to all of your worries. Yeah. That nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. When fear tries to overrule your thoughts. When fear begins to pull at your peace. Yeah. God sends angels to remind you that the impossible is possible yeah. right. with God. Amen. Whoever comes to you may not have wings like an angel. Mm. They may not be dressed in white. He may be a preacher with a Bible, but he sends a word to remind you that with God, all things are possible. And just like Mary needed confirmation concerning God's power, he will send you the same kind of confirmation to let you know that you can believe that what he says is true. That's the ministry of confirmation. You know, when people talk about uh, uh, someone coming and, and prophesying, no, no, no. What they're doing is they're involved in a ministry of confirmation mm -hmm. because whatever they t they're telling you that God has already revealed to you, mm -hmm. their assignment is simply to confirm it. Yes. Yes. It's, to, it's to let you know, you know what? I've been thinking about that. I, I've been yes. dreaming about that. I've been, yes. I've been laboring with that issue. And here you come straightening out and letting me know. This not no new revelation. It's a confirmation of what God is already doing. Yes. And guess what? God did not use someone that Mary did not know. Yes. Uh, he used someone that Mary knew and was very close to. Yes. So what am I saying? I'm saying that God deals with your fear events in familiar settings and everyday circumstances. Yes. You won't have to travel far to faraway places uh, to get your answers. God will give you your answers and calm your fears right where you are. With people you've been knowing all your life. Yeah. With situations you are very familiar with. Yeah. Mary found out that her fear event was also a sign of God's favor mm -hmm. in her life. Yeah. Our fear events speak to God's favor on our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Why would God go out of his way to shake you up for nothing? <laughs> God shakes you up because he's got an agenda yes. in the future yes. of your days. Yes. 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 Listen to the words of the angel in Luke chapter 1 verse 30. It says, and the angel said in her, unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor yes. with God. Yes. And guess what? Favor is not favor unless it comes from God. Amen. I just Amen. said something. 
Men can give you blessings. Men can give you mercy, but they can never give you favor. Amen. It occurs to me that, that fear yes. and favor seem to be strange traveling companions. But when God places you in a divinely unpointed situation, favor always follows your fear. When we finally realize that our situation is not what it appeared to be and that God has big plans for us, that's when we understand that we have been blessed with God's special favor. Favor is not to be bragged about. Favor is not to be shown as some trophy from God. It is an instrument to set you apart from everybody else. What Mary thought was disaster turned into God's favor. Do I have a witness this morning that God's favor shows up when distress and disappointment seems to be winning the day? God's favor says, not only do I love you, but I've got big plans for you. You know what that says to me? That favor ain't free. Favor said that thing that you feared will be your road to victory. And our fears disappear when we witness God's favor on our lives. And then finally, I need to get out your way when I tell you this. Finally, joy and good news are on the other side of our fear events. According to the Christmas story, On the night that the Christ child was born in Bethlehem, Mm -hmm. there were shepherds in the field nearby. Luke chapter 2 verse 9 says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The sight of the angel was both a frightening and a confusing sight. The term, the glory of the Lord, Mm -hmm. is often used the same as the light of the Lord. Again, this this one angel, this one, Mm -hmm. come giving calming words. He said to the the shepherds, fear not. I often ask myself, what, what was God's purpose for sending this message to these shepherds? The birth would have taken place. Mm -hmm. The wise men were on their way. Mm -hmm. Well, why the shepherds? Mm -hmm. And the answer that I was given is that the shepherds were selected as the first worshipers of Jesus the Christ child. The shepherds represented all of the people. He couldn't send the mayor of Bethlehem. He didn't send the dignitaries of Bethlehem. He sent the lowly shepherds to represent you and me. Uh, uh, The angel was saying, I've got news that will turn your fear into joy. (laughs) He said, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you is born, unto you, plural. Unto all the people is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ our Lord. Someone has called this the first gospel message to be preached. The angel said, I bring you good tidings and great joy. Uh, uh, Good tidings and great joy. Isn't that the goal of the gospel? Uh, The gospel replaces our fear with good news and joy. The gospel, uh, not only that, but he gives us good news uh, to all people. It's not for just those in the pew, but it's for those on the corner. It wasn't until they had heard the gospel that these shepherds found the courage to go to Bethlehem. It's a good thing that only one angel delivered the gospel message. For verse 13 says, and suddenly, (laughs) it said there was a multitude of angels, a heavenly host, praise God. They were so afraid over the one angel. (laughs) So God said, hold up, I better better just send one. I don't want to kill my boys. 
But when they found out the good news, uh, then he could bring the host. Uh, uh, John the Baptist was by himself paving the way for Jesus Christ. When John the Baptist's job was done, uh, here comes the host of other evangelists and preachers bringing good news. The shepherd's fear was transformed into action because the words of the angel. And the angel said in verse 15, Mm -hmm. it says this, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, Mm -hmm. the shepherds said one to the other, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. So it wasn't until after they had seen the child. The Bible says they went and they saw the Christ child. And in verse 17, they didn't stop there. After they had seen the child, verse 17 says, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. You cannot preach the message of good news until you have seen the evidence. I say to preachers young and old, they won't believe your message until they see the evidence that you show of living the message. They saw uh, that and what they saw was true. The angel's report was verified, yes. and, and and their their response was to spread the news yes. abroad. Yes, yes sir. Yes. When when your moment of fear has been replaced with the reassurance of God, yes. it's time to get up. Yes. it's time to yes. go. Yes. and it's time to do what God is calling you to do. Yes. what am I saying to the people of God? Don't just celebrate the arrival of the Christ child. Don't just get excited about him coming into the world. But it's time upon his arrival, when you see the evidence of his arrival, to get up, as my pastor used to say, off your rusty dusty, and do something. Share the good news and spread it abroad. It's time to do what God has been calling you to do. Fear is not always what it appears to be. God is always behind the fear events in our lives. Fear is often a sign of God's favor. And joy and good news are always on the other side of our fear. Oh, somebody bless his name today. Somebody praise his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. Two words, two words. Fear not. Mm. Calm you right down. Start things to, starting to make sense. If, but because fear is a paralyzer. How many times have I said that in from this pulpit? Fear will 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 stop a good work. Fear will kill a great idea. How many great dreams and plans have died on uh, the table because of fear? I wonder what they're going to say. I wonder how they're going to respond. This won't work. I'll be the laughing stock. Yes. People will start looking at me differently. Mm. Fear speaks all of this negativity yes. in order to counter the work that God has God. for God. us Thank to you. do. Amen. So the last thing yes. he wants us to respond to his word with is fear. Uh-huh. And then not only that, but he will always give you evidence. Yes. He will always give you, Mary Mary couldn't believe it until she found out that her older cousin Elizabeth was with child. 
Long as she had been living, they'd been trying to have a baby. Yes, yes. And here come uh, Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. Yes. <laughs> they told, they told uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias what to call that child, too. Mm -hmm. yes, they did. Yes, they did. Call him John. Yes. Yes. Little did we know that, that God is using everybody seated before me and all who are under the sound of my voice mm -hmm. to do something for the cause of Christ. Yes. And fear usually is your roadblock. Yes. Stop, stop succumbing to the fears mm -hmm. and respond to the Lord's fear not. Amen. Amen. Do I have a witness? Amen. And be like the shepherds yes. who were once so afraid and they became bold enough to spread what they heard and yes. saw yes. abroad. Yes. Shall we all stand? Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. If, you, if you can get a printed copy of this, if you can look at it, uh, do it again because there are some nuggets in there yes. that I don't want you to miss. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today, perhaps viewing on Facebook and you don't know whether or not for sure you're saved. Mm -hmm. Stop walking around hoping you're saved. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm saved. My mama told me to go to church. You have to know for yourself. Amen. You've got to have that encounter how do you get it? By inviting the Lord into your life. Asking him to save you. Receiving him as savior. Trusting him with your faults. Your sins. Your failures. And knowing that he will be faithful and just. To forgive you of all your sins. Yes, we will. And then to cleanse you. Yes. From all unrighteousness. Yes, and once you are convinced that. He is a resident in your heart. Mm -hmm. Then your next assignment is to follow. That's right. To follow the Savior. Yes, yes, yes. Not only him but his instructions. He won't always speak to you, but if you open your Bibles, if you get under the, the, the sound of good, Christ-centered, biblical preaching, he will speak to you. He'll change your life and make it brand new. Do I have a witness? Perhaps there's somebody here, if you're not saved, start walking now. If you're already saved, but, you, but you're out of fellowship or, or in between fellowship, then we open our doors as well as our arms and invite you to be a part of this place, this local church. Nope, not perfect. Starting from the pulpit to the door we're not perfect but we depend on the perfection of Christ yes, yes, to make us new every day Thank you, Lord. am I right about it Amen. we invite you to come and be a part of this place this church and these people can I pray with you precious God our father and creator Thank you, Lord, for a rich word, yes, yes. a timely word. Yes, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for ears to hear, yes, yes, yes. hearts to receive, yes. and for lives to want to be changed and redirected. Yes, Lord. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice that they may be secure in Christ and that they may be properly aligned with a Christ-centered church. 
And then, Lord, remind us that we cannot just be hearers of your word. But we've got to become bold enough to be doers. Spreading the good news abroad. The good news of Jesus the Christ. Bless us now as you see fit. Alleviate our fears. Remind us of our favor. And then the good news of Jesus Christ. This is our prayer today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Give God praise. He's worthy today. Don't forget your offering on the way out. Don't forget our mission and benevolence offering. And now, my brothers and sisters, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these thy people. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen.